What's going on, Garage Gang? Matt from Garage MC here, guys. In today's video, I gotta get this Yamaha Banshee chassis prepped and ready for the engine that we blew up, but are now rebuilding with a bunch of brand new stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the last video, but let's get into this video. Let's do it. In this video, guys, this is what I wanna do. Uh, one of the wheel bearings on the front has a little bit of play, so we're gonna put new wheel bearings in it. Um, one of the upper A-arm bushings has play in it, so we're gonna put new bushings in all of them so one two three four five six twelve new bushings we got the delrin ones from vetoes uh i also got some nice cnc billet uh, aluminum tie rods new tie rod ends here are the front wheel bearings uh you know two for each side with the new seals and everything uh, i got the nice cnc billet upper steering stem clamp um tusk lower bearing kit for the steering stem uh, I'm not going to use these brake pads, but this is what came with it. Uh, I'm going to do wave rotors, front and rear. Uh, I also bought pivot bearings and a whole new rear carrier setup, but the pivot bearings and the carrier on this bike are still like, very tight. There's no play at all, so I'm not going to do those yet. However, the linkage and the rear shock also need to be done. I think I'm going to do the linkage and shock in its own video, though, because that's a little bit more entailed than, you know, swapping this stuff out. So, Jack quad up, took front wheels off, took off our, uh, I guess, rock guards, I guess is what you would call them. I also took the front bumper off. We're going to a Chrome Duncan Racing front bumper. I'll show that to you guys in a second. Obviously, you got to take that out to get the bolts out for the upper A-arms. Um, <clears throat> so, after, take the wheels off, rock guards, and I know a lot of you guys know what you're doing, but, you know, a lot of this stuff is for people that maybe just got into the sport and don't know what they're doing, so... I'm gonna pull out the cotter pin, take this nut off. This will all slide off once we remove the brake caliper because you can't take the hub out with the caliper still around the rotor. Uh, I'm gonna clean up all of our other guards and everything. Um, I'm going to vapor blast the front wheel hubs. And then uh, after we do that, then we'll start working our way more inboard. I'm going to go ahead and do one side and then reassemble it. This way you guys can see the difference from left to right before we do one together. So, let's get on into it. All right, man, so if you guys didn't watch the last video, got the whole engine torn down. We ended up blowing this thing up. Like I said, if you wanna know the details, go back to the old video. Whole bunch of stuff to do, man. Whole bunch of stuff to do. We went with the 370 kit, blah, 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 blah. Um, here's the Duncan Racing chrome front bumper. Uh, I love the way that bumper looks on several different quads on a Banshee. Definitely a proper look for the Banshee. Uh, so, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this uh, one side. There's a bunch of other like little stuff I gotta do to this bike too that you guys aren't gonna get to see, like polish those uh, Bill's pipes that are on the ground there, get those all cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna disassemble the headlights, polish the lenses. You know, there's a whole bunch of other little stuff that that, that has got to uh, got to be done. Um, I was about to throw the rad in there with the new lines, and I'm like, well, I'm going to have to end up taking it right back out again and do the steering stem and all that stuff. So that kind of stopped me right in my tracks. Second thought, guys, we'll just do it together to speed up the process. So the caliper is held on in this fashion here. It's got two 12-millimeter bolts, at least stock, that come out. Slide your brake caliper off the rotor, and then we're left with this. After we remove the nut and washer and cotter pin that would hold it on to the knuckle. So there's four bolts that hold the rotor on. They're specialty bolts. They got like a little shoulder on there or collar, dowel, however you want to say it. We could pull these off. Now these can go in the package that the new rotors came in and go in my OEM parts box that we're going to start because any parts that come off of this, and you guys know Banshees, the OEM parts is where it's at. So I want to always be able to put it back to stock if I ever decide to get rid of it or, you know, anything like that. So it uh, costs a lot of money to replace this stuff, all OEM. But um, the rotor's got a little spot where the bolt sits into, so it's not the same on both sides. So you just want to make sure if you're putting a new one on, you, you know, put it the right way. It also helps center the rotor on the hub. So at this point, I'm going to vapor blast this hub. I'm going to leave the old bearings in it for now, just to protect the uh, bearing surfaces in there. So you guys can get a good look at how this looks now. And I'm gonna do this in my cabinet that I built for 350 bucks, which a couple of you find that hard to believe that I get good results out of something that I built for less than $400, including the cabinet. So, all right, nice OEM, OEM logos on there, nice. All right, 
Let's clean this thing up, man. Get a good look at it right here. Old and crusty. All right, man. So for comparison, here's old crusty dusty. And then here's freshly vapor blasted, man. Nice and clean. Looks like it's brand new. I went nice and light to not take the zinc plating off the back of the studs. Kept that all intact. That's all ready to go. So uh, before we disassemble this, I'm going to continue disassembling the front end with you guys. So the next thing I'm doing, these two 10 mil bolts right here, remove this inner rock guard. Um, when you do when you do reassemble this, obviously I'll say it when we go to put it back together, but definitely lock tight on here. You don't want these loose. One, it'll you get a little rattle, and little rattles drive me absolutely insane on a quad. So and obviously you don't want the bolt coming out where everything's rotating through the caliper because you know wheel spinning this way, bolt gets jammed in. It's not going to be pretty. So this just slides off of the knuckle. And while this is off, I'm going to clean this as good as I can and also flatten it back out as it should be. So um, these are directional. The left only goes on the left. The right only goes on the right. That's how it comes off. Um, obviously, if you try to do it the other way around, it wouldn't be right. So in this little lip here, pretty much you think of it like the rotor gets uh, hugged in there. So we'll put this to the side for now. Now, I had already taken out all my cotter pins. Uh, these came out pretty good, almost like working on a brand new bike, and this thing's a 1997. It came off nice and easy. Cotters came out good. You can tell it's really never been, really never been messed with, man. It still has the factory black or olive drab zinc on it. So, pretty, pretty still happy with this bike, even though I blew it up. It's not a big deal. That's just part of it, man. It's just part of it. Uh, cotter pins, yeah, they're right here. Never reuse cotter pins, man. They're cheap. Always put a new one in. You know, once they get bent around and all that stuff, those things really do serve a an enormous, you know, responsibility when on these castle nuts, man. You don't want any of this stuff coming loose when you're out riding. Uh, all three of these nuts, the one for the tie rod and the upper and lower ball joint for the A arms, they are all the same size. They are a 17 millimeter. So I'm going to continue disassembling this. I'm probably going to clean up, well, not probably, I'm definitely going to clean this knuckle up as well. It should be black, but it looks nice and clean. Well, I mean, it's dirty, but it's not like missing missing the coating or anything like that. So I don't need to re-powder coat these. I'm just going to clean these up uh, as best as I can. All right, man, I'm going to continue uh, disassembling this. Um, uh, even if you really don't know what you're doing, you should be able to know how to take something apart. Just pay attention to what you're doing and, you know, keep everything organized. I usually put the bolts and nuts back where they go. Um, this way they don't get lost. Um, taking some of these, like the tie rod ends and getting the knuckle out of the ball joints on the A-arms. This can be <clears throat> a difficult situation here. Um... I know they make pickle forks where you could jam it in there and pry it off and all that stuff, but <clears throat> when you do that, you tend to tear the boot up, and you don't want to have these boots torn up. Yes, you can replace these if you do. They're just held on with like a, uh, a little spring that goes around the bottom of them, uh, upper and lower. Same thing on the tie rod ends as well. Um, you never want to, like if this nut was off of here, you never want to smash on, <laughs> on this part like the threads with a hammer, you, you just don't want to do it. You will end up literally crushing this down and you'll never get the nut back on. Then you got to grind the threads off of it and it just turns into a nightmare. So don't ever hit these with a hammer. I usually flip the nut upside down and then thread it uh, down to where the bolt section is almost to the top and then you can hit on it like that um, I still wouldn't wail on it though if I were you. They do make uh, ball joint splitting tools that are uh, pretty foolproof. I don't have any of those yet. Uh, every time I do something like this, I keep telling myself I gotta order stuff. But um, so the shock is, you know, a 14 and a 17. The A arms are 14 and a 14. Lower is 14 and a 14. Um, start taking the upper A arm out now. Uh, remember how everything goes when you take it apart, like the brake line and caliper goes through the a-arm and then it goes you know how it was set up so you want to try and keep the factory line routing you know if you care about it yes it'll work several different ways but 
you know, want to put it back to how Yamaha did this one. So I'm going to pull the rest of this apart and then we'll pick up with, you know, doing the hub bearings and the A-arm bushings. So here's everything disassembled off the front of the bike. We got our knuckle, upper A-arm, lower A-arm. So reason we took these off, um, one, I got the uh, Yamaha silver touch-up paint. Um, it's almost a damn shame to even do that, but... I mean, this bike's from 97, guys, and the A-arms aren't even scratched up or dinged up or anything. Definitely got lucky with the condition of the chassis of this bike. So, on Yamaha, they have these things called dust caps on here. These simply just pull off like that. These will all go in the ultrasonic cleaner and get cleaned up. And the parts that we are fixing here, most of these were okay. It's usually your upper ones that are going to develop some play. Like you could grab your wheel and pull on it and you'll see like, if you really like do it slow and look at everything, how it's moving, you could see it budge very slightly. Only one upper on this quad was a little bit loose, but this is one of them things like, you know, you're gonna do it. You might as well do it all. You know, steering stem, tie rod ends, everything. Wheel bearings, you know, take care of the brake calipers, all that stuff, all at one shot. Um, these you're gonna have to like stick something through and then knock it out of the A-arm, and then same situation, just reverse, you just squeeze them back in. There's also a metal sleeve in here, upper and lower A-arm. They each get one of these. This is where the bolt goes through. You don't wanna lose these. This is a good time to clean all this stuff, obviously. Um, another good spot to clean while you have this apart is something that you can't get to when the A-arms are on the quad, like in here. You know, you want to go ahead and take advantage of this opportunity and just clean all this stuff out, man. So that's also what I'm going to do and um, get this all prepped up. And then the next scene, I will show you guys how I pop those out and we'll press one. And I'm not going to do every single one with you. We'll just do like, you know, one section on the lower A arm and we'll call that good. And then we'll pick back up and, uh, you know, move on to the steering stem bearing. I don't know if we're going to do that in this video. I've done steering stem bearings before on quads. If you guys really want to know how to do that, go back and check some of my older older videos. It's all the same stuff, man, you know? So I don't really need to uh, soak up your viewing time showing you something that I've already showed you before. So check out older videos, guys, if you want to know how to do some other stuff. Uh, the linkage, on the other hand, I am going to do that and the rear shock in uh, another video because I've done 250R linkages, 400EX linkage, 450R linkages, and other videos. Um, you know, this is a different setup, so... It's basically all the same principle though. But, all right, let me clean up and we'll do one of these A-arms together. All right, so we got our old uh, A-arm bushings pushed out, fairly simple guys. Take a flathead, stick it through from one side, hit it with a hammer. I like to use a dead blow. Um, you can get those at Harbor Freight, they're cheap too. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit further with this that I'm not gonna do in this video, but I'm taking the Grease Zerg fittings out and I am going to touch up these A-arms. So we will pick back up, uh, it'll probably be by tomorrow in this video, well tomorrow for me, but um, I'm going to scuff these up, sand them down a little bit, and I'm going to touch these up with the factory uh, Yamaha touch-up paint. I'll show you guys what that looks like. It's this company here that puts the stuff out, color right. This is the Yamaha Silver, so there's your number on there. If you guys wanna you know, order yourself up a can, you guys will get to see what it looks like here in this video. So this is the company. You can get it on eBay. I think it was like, I think it was like 40 something bucks for two cans, which isn't too bad considering the Passion Red for a 250R is like $65 per can. I got two of these for like 45. So you guys will get to see what that looks like. Um, I got the knuckle cleaned up. I am not going to touch this with any type of touch up paint because it's still in really nice shape. It even still has the Yamaha white paint marker on it. And you guys that know about OEM Banshees or Yamahas across the board, uh, they would put white paint, little white dots on a bunch of stuff. There's a certain amount that come on a Banshee. Uh, people that are like real enthusiasts could tell you exactly how many white dots should be on an OEM Banshee. But um, I could really care less if it's OEM. I'm gonna ride the shit, not stare at it, standing up in the corner and go, hey, look what I got. Nope, I wanna ride my shit. So. 
I'm going to go ahead and do the A arms and then we will pick back up. By then I'll have the other side off as well. And then uh, I'll also show you guys how to swap the front wheel hub bearings. All right, guys, we're getting late in the day today. Um, those are getting prepped up for paint. Um, I'd like to do them all at the same time, but I want to do one side and then show you guys a comparison of how it looks and how it's going to look after it's like refurbished and cleaned and, you know, recoated and vapor blasted and all that good stuff. So we could jump to this real quick. So on your wheel hub, you'll have, well, on the front, the side where you put the wheel on, you'll have your seal in there and there's also this little spacer you can pull the spacer out and then what i normally do is i'll just take a flathead and get it in there they actually make tools for pulling seals out but i've never really had a problem with doing it like this i usually get it in there nice and firm and then i'll twist the screwdriver and that'll pop it let you get it out same thing for the back side there's no spacer on the back side it's actually built into the knuckle you see that fatter section there so you get that out now there is another spacer in here um, it only goes in one way because it's tapered just like that is see how it's thinner at the top and then thicker down at the bottom so you definitely want to make sure that goes back in the right way or your hub's not going to go on the right way it'll go on backwards which isn't going to be good so um in this case you can move that spacer to the side you guys see how it's like uh see how it's off center right now so now you can catch the lip of the bearing on the other side. Also with a flat head or you could use a drift or a brass punch um, and then you just push the bearing out. What you wanna do though is you wanna push a little bit out this side and then you wanna move to the other side and push a little bit out and just keep it coming out evenly. And then when that falls out, you could take the sleeve that's in there out, flip it over and it'll be easier to pop the second one out. So. That's basically how they come out. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that now, and then we'll reassemble it together. All right, and that's what that looks like all disassembled. Same thing like I just said. Push the little inner sleeve to the side. Hit the edge of the bearing. You guys can see where I hit this one. So this is now trash, but it was trash anyway. So, and then flipped it over and banged out the top one. Here's what that inner sleeve looks like. Um, if it makes sense, the uh, smaller side goes to the smaller bearing, larger goes to the larger. That's why it's tapered like that. Um, definitely do this on a block of wood. Don't don't set this down like on concrete. You will damage you will damage your hub. So, and if something feels like it's not coming out, it's for a reason. Double check what you're doing and stop. Um, when you get the bearing somewhat pushed out, like to this point, obviously you can't push it anymore so you got to put it up on something I just opened up my vise and set it down on the uh, holes where the caliper goes and then the other one once it started coming out I just kind of held it like sideways and held the screwdriver and it came right out so there's that um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the inside of this a little bit clean up my bush um, the sleeve that goes in there and we'll throw this one back together with new seals and you know, it'll be the same process for the other hub as well. We'll go ahead and call that good and put this one to the side. All right, man, so here is the front wheel bearing kit. Obviously fits many, many different quads. This is like a pretty common part that's shared across a lot of makes and models. Um, here's your part numbers if you guys wanna pause the video and look at that. This one is by Pivot Works. I usually, I'll always choose Pivot Works for any of the bearings that are like, in constant rotation you know what i mean like wheel bearings steering stem bearing i got a tusk one um it was what was available um when i searched for it that one i mean it just gets you know turned a little bit for the steering stem not worried about that uh you know until you get into like engine bearings and stuff like that transmission bearings then i always go with like you know nsk or whatever like quality brand there are for that i never run any chinese stuff on the internals of an engine so anyway, here's what comes in here. Most important part, sticker. You get your one, two, three, four seals, two small, two large, and then here's the bearings. Obviously, one large, one small for each side of the quad. So we need two of those, we'll need one large seal, and we'll need one small seal. And then the rest of this can go back in the box so we get to the other side. So now this is just a reversal of taking it out, man. Um, I will, after I clean this, which I haven't wiped out the inside yet, I'll wipe this down and I'll also wipe a little anti-season here. This way, next time they come out, 
you know, they're not seized or anything. Quads go in water and stuff like that. They get oxidized in there and seized, and it'll be way more of a pain in the ass to get these out. So this is one way to put the bearings in. This is a bearing slash race slash seal installation tool. Uh, this head comes off of this here. Uh, obviously, you take the nut out. You can use it for different sizes. There's been a couple occasions where... Um, it was slightly larger than something, but I mean, this is a metric set. You can also get them in a, you know, SAE standard set for different size bearings, larger, this, that. Um, if you're pushing in a seal or a bearing, you know, you want to use the flat side. If you're pushing in a bearing race, like in the neck of a trike or a dirt bike or even a bicycle, you'd flip it around and use the tapered side. <clears throat> so we're going to figure out what size is what. So this one's good for the large bearing. Whenever you're pushing a bearing into something, you don't want to push or hit on the inner race or the seal. You want to get on this outer race. We'll put a little bit of our anti-seize in here. Anti-seize is your friend, guys. Just be sure to wipe your hands off whenever you're done messing with this stuff because this stuff will get everywhere. Everywhere. It never, ever fails. Never fails. It gets everywhere. Um, if you're having a problem putting these in, you could put the bearings in the freezer which will make them contract and get a little bit smaller from freezing the molecules will get tighter when they get colder and you could also heat up the hub which would expand the metal then therefore make it a lot easier to push in these are usually not not a problem but once you get going in a little bit it will straighten out and you can move this to the side a little bit and, you know, favor one side more than the other if it's giving you an issue. And when it bottoms out, you'll hear the, the pitch of the hit change. So the way that this sounds now, as I'm knocking on it and making this stuff go all over the friggin' place, which I'm going to move, actually, um, you'll hear the pitch of it change. It'll get, like... From a hollow sound to a deep sound when when the bearing bottoms out now it's bottomed out i don't know if you guys could hear the sound difference but there she is just enough room to put our seal in so now we'll take our sleeve make sure it's going in the right direction which is like this large side to the large side small side small side to the small side I can't talk. To... Same thing. Little, little anti seize in there. Never hurt nothing. And we're going to need a different size installation tool. So this is the same procedure as we just did on the other side. So let me put this in and then we'll pick back up and we'll put the seals in. Got my seals ready to go. I like to pack my seals with uh, Maxima waterproof grease. <clears throat> I mean, you don't have to because technically these are sealed bearings, but. I will always do that and so the part that I packed goes in towards the bearing the writing 99.9% .9 of the time on anything will always face the outside of the part or the bike so we just line this up and these do not take much to get in place you just you can give them a little tap if you want or just push them in and they should be nice and flush with the outside of the part Sometimes you can push them in a little further, um, but you know, typ typically they'll just be flush with the part. So that's all nice and ready to go, packed. Same thing on this side, do the same exact thing. And we can call this wheel hub done. All right. All right, so there's one side as far as the wheel hub completed so we can go ahead and put that to the side until we're ready all right now i am going to do this side of the a-arms tonight and uh we'll get that prepped up and if i wasn't filming i would just do it all at one time but i want you guys to see the difference so i, mean, I guess i could just take a picture of it you know what yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take a picture of it and i'm gonna take this other side off real quick too and get this ready once i take that side off i can put the bike in the garage and uh Leave it on the stand for the night, and then this stuff will be, this stuff will be nice and dry and ready to go for tomorrow, and we can reassemble it and end this video. 
All right, fellas, a couple days later now, two days, I've been flip-flopping back and forth between the Banshee and Jesse's 426 build. Uh, I'm trying to get his quad out of here, like, ASAP, you know what I mean? Um, without rushing it, though. Uh, it's taken quite a while between rounding up all the parts and three different sets of plastics, two which had to get returned um, due to however they packaged it. They were all warped and everything happened twice. Well, the first time it was a, the wrong color, the second time they were warped, and they're OEM plastics, not, not Meyer going on this bike. It's all, it's going to look like a stock 400, but with a twist. You guys will see that when it gets done. Um, the Banshee, however, I got the A-Arms. I painted these two days ago. That paint match color is literally dead spot on. I mean, obviously, it's supposed to be. It's the right paint code, so I guess that shouldn't be too shocking. Um, so I'm about to start cleaning up the front end of the quad. I am going to touch the frame up as well. There's a couple little spots that need touch up, which means I'm going to, like I said earlier, I'm going to take this opportunity to clean out where the A-arms go, um, get that all ready, and basically the, I'm going to touch up the front half, and then when I take the rear half apart, I'll touch up that stuff as well. Um, where are we at? So I got all my stuff laid out. Everything's nice and clean and ready to go. This is all for the left side of the bike. This is for the right side of the bike. I got my new tie rods ready to go. Uh, the old ones cleaned up and look brand new. I put those right back in the packaging that the new stuff came in. Uh, all the bolts are clean and ready to rock. All the zinc coating is still like mint on them. Looks like they've never even been taken off before. Everything cleaned up very well. Knuckle, other knuckle cleaned up. That's all ready. So I'm just getting prepped up and ready to go here. I'm going to start cleaning the frame and getting all that gook and stuff out where the A-arms go or like Bonzi says, uh, dunt and scunt. Get all that out of there. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. Let me clean this up and then we'll pick up. I'm also going to take the calipers off and vapor blast those so they look new too. All right, fellas, so uh, sorry about the wind, man. It's windy out, of course. Uh, you know, it would be windy when I'm trying to do touch-up paint and stuff, but so you guys can see, I left this side still dirty and all gooked up. You can see how that looks. Just getting it prepped for touch-up. You don't want to put paint over dirt and grease because obviously it won't stick to it. So we got that all nice and cleaned out. Uh, I'm going to clean it one more time, and I got to get a pick in there and get some of the stuff like in the corners. But in order to close this video out the front wheel bearings and the a-arm bushings let's go ahead and i saved one a-arm to do with you guys this way you guys see how these bushings go in they're pretty damn simple man it's pretty pretty simple so i'll show you guys how i do it and then i'll piece you guys out and end the video all right guys a little unorthodox but it's a little windy outside and you know can't really it's kind of annoying when you're watching a video so anyway got the a-arm here ready to go we got our new bushings. Um, you can't really push these in by hand, so what I like to do is take my dead blow hammer, and you don't need a lot of force for these, man. They 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 really just they just go in, you know. Let's see if I can get you guys in a shot here. Tapping pretty lightly. Make sure you get it all the way in and bottomed out. And I rubbed a little uh, maximum waterproof grease on that. Uh, now for the other side, same exact thing. I'm going to go ahead and bump this in and then we'll pick back up. All right, so now both of those are pushed in. And we're going to take our dowel that the bolt goes through. This goes in here. You might need to tap on this a little bit as well. Sometimes they go right in. But, you know, new new bushings are pretty tight. We're going to take a little bit of grease now. I get these Q-tips at Harbor Freight. This is maximum waterproof grease, like I said. I just like to put a little, a little film right where the cap is going to go. And just around the edge, too, so the seal catches a little bit of it. We're going to do that to both sides, obviously. Just, just a small film. It don't need to be much. You don't want it hanging out of these caps either because it will just attract dust. And the caps just push on. Just like that. One on each side. You do need these. You do need these. Otherwise, when you go to tighten the bolt down, it will 
pinch the frame towards the A-arms. You don't want to do that. One last piece. We have grease art. I took these out and ran them in the ultrasonic cleaner and then scrubbed any of the dirt off of them. So there we go, man. One uh, Banshee A-arm with new bushings in it. Caps are all cleaned off. Uh, these are, I believe these are aluminum. You can polish these, but I kind of want this bike looking stock, but to be, you know, faster than stock. I know there's like 9 million different ways to build a Yamaha Banshee. There's so many options out there. There's so much aftermarket support. I mean, you could go OEM all the way to just crazy drag machine, dune machine, trail machine. Um, granted, the Banshees aren't the best handling quads out there. You know, they're not the best handling. 250R, in my opinion, is the best handling bike. Straight line power, Yamaha Banshee. You know what I mean? My 250R, 330R, you know, with the big bore kit on it, it, uh, it hangs right with Tim's Banshee that has this same exact top end on it. Um, I'm going a, a little different. He's got a stock head, stock reeds. Uh, with Toomey's, I'm obviously doing the cool head, V-Force 4 reads. So, you know, it'll be it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. A little competition always, always makes things better, you know? So I opted to not put the front end back on yet. I am stripping the wire harness off. I'm putting black ASV levers on it. Um, I have a whole nother rear brake setup. Uh, master, brake pedal, brake lines, reservoir, rear, ma uh, rear caliper. I have a whole nother set all still put together so i'm going to leave this whole assembly with the parking brake and the lever all as one piece that will go in the box with all the oem parts and uh what was i just gonna say yeah so i'm putting asv levers on it black so it still looks you know stock um what else i'm going to vapor blast the front brake calipers those are going to go back on the other rear brake caliper i have will get recoded um with new pads put in it and that's where we're at, man. I'm going to take, you know, the wire harness and rewrap it and clean all that up. I'm going to clean up the CDI. Everything's going to get armor all put back on. All the lines are going to get all wiped down. Everything. Everything's going to get disassembled and cleaned and reassembled. So the next video that you guys are going to see on this Banshee is going to be the rear shock getting rebuilt with the bushings and, you know, bearings and seals and everything that goes in that for the top bolt and the lower bolt. And the whole linkage is going to get rebuilt, vapor blasted, all that good stuff. Probably going to vapor blast the shock too and get that all looking brand new. And then the video after that will be, we'll put the engine in and uh, put this thing back together. We'll get it back into a roller, then put the engine in, put the body back on it. And then, and then we will get to go enjoy this thing and know exactly, exactly what is into it. All brand new bearings, engine fresh, complete, top to bottom, everything done, all of it touched up. It's going to be a very nice bike, man. It's going to be a nice bike. I'm also going to disassemble the headlights, polish the lenses. It's going to look like a brand new Banshee. So that's the route we're going. These wheels that I put on it, uh, not, not, I mean, I like them, but not on this quad. So I'm going to go to a regular beadlock ring, but I'm going to, at least I'm planning on, powder coating the wheels and the beadlock rings gold. So it looks like the, the stock way that it looked with the gold wheels i think it just looks proper and that's just what i want to do so the reason i'm saying planning on doing that is that that is a ton of work to get that done powder coat and wheels especially with the setup that i have i have to do them you know one at a time i can't just do like a batch you know what i mean so anyway i will see you guys in the next video on the banshee we're going to do the rear shock and the linkage thanks for joining me in the garage today if you haven't subscribed yet it's free um, if you want to jump on the channel members board, jump on the channel members board, man. There's definitely room for you. There's definitely room for you. We got six people now. And I'll see you guys in the garage next time, man. Thanks for joining me. See you then. Peace. You guys, you guys thought I was joking, huh? I know the video's over, but, you know, I figured I'd throw this in there, man. The brake calipers came out. Colleen. Woo, boy. And for those of you guys that are still here watching the end of this video, first off, thank you. Second off, you know, here's the, the picture from before, like I said I would take. Go ahead and take a look at this, man. And I, I'll tell you what, I now know why these Duncan Racing front bumpers are so friggin' expensive.
Now I now get it. I've always wanted one. I've never cracked the nut of buying a brand new one before ever. But this time I did, and I'm glad I did. Anyway, here's your after. Yeah, buddy. I'll overlay the other picture back over here just for a hot second. Let me see if I can put this in the right area so you guys can see. If you're wondering why the shocks aren't on there yet, it's because we're not putting stock shocks on this. We're just not. I also took the other light off. Or, uh, is this the, yeah, this one's I completely disassembled the light and cleaned it, polished the lens and all that stuff. So, big, big difference with the look. Let me grab the other one and see if I can show you the difference. So here's the other one that I didn't polish yet. See if you guys can see if this shows up. Yeah. Looks way better, man. Looks way better. In my opinion. So I'll see you guys that are still here in the next video. We're going to tackle the rear end of this. And then the video after that, we'll put it back together. And then we'll do a ride video on this thing. See how it is. Being you're still here watching the end of this, go do something, man. Turn this shit off. Go, go, go work on your shit now, all right? Then drop a comment and tell me what you did to it. You guys know I read and answer them all. Peace.